In favour. In favour. Anyone against? Me. And one against. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Can I have that as a named vote, please, Ashley? And yes. I will, I will be adding as chair my reasons for, uh, as, as chair, for not signing the minutes. Please. No. Oh. I'm oh, sorry, one, Pastor one, one, Todd. One, you weren't chair. in attendance to that, at that Shall meeting. we move on, Brian? Yes, please. You need to look at the standing orders. This is, this oh. Yes, correct, you do. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right, where have we got to? Order of payments. Couldn't sign the order of payments, right? Anybody? Is anybody forwarding this item? Forwarding? Well, proposing, I should say. I'll propose that we accept it. I'll second that. Okay, all in favour? In favour. In, in favour. favour. I, shall, I shall abstain. Could I ask why, Chair? No. You're abstaining from the order of payments? Yes. Would that be a normal thing to do? Do we discuss these things? Well, well, we move on to the next item, item okay. six. Okay. I didn't challenge you for your reasons for, sign, for voting in favour of it. You don't. Yeah, that's because we were you, there. You, we witnessed you, it. You don't. You don't challenge me for my reasons for abstaining. Wasn't a challenge. It was just a question, Chair. I think it sounded rather like a challenge, but never mind. No, it was a question. Okay, item six. To retrospectively agree. The six. To retros Shall I read it, Chair? That would be very kind of you. Motion. 21056 to retrospectively agree the secondment of officers for Hamforth Parish Council for the purposes of its functions under LGA 1972, that's Local Government Act 1972, section 113 brackets 1, close brackets, and Local Government Act 1972, section 113 brackets 2, close brackets, specifically for meetings held on the 25th and 27th of August 2020, and also the 10th of December 2020 and 21st of January 2021. Why did we need to do this retrospectively? You didn't do it beforehand. Yes, but the, the implication seems to be that we did something that we ought not to have done and now we want to give ourselves uh, sort of the legal backing for having done it. Yes, there, there was uh, a situation where Councillor Brewerton was explaining how our meetings were also illegal because uh, we hadn't taken a vote on who to have as clerk, if you recollect that. And what's that got to do with Section 113? Section 113 is where we would second... Yes. Uh, one, right. one, one, a member of our staff to somebody else, or that we would we were so we you, no. yourself and uh, David David Naylor, he was not um, sworn in, if you like, as you've uh, been doing at the previous meetings with Councillor Brewerton, that he is then agreed as the uh, clerk for the meeting and for the meetings on. Uh, the 10th of December and 1st of January. We didn't do that for Jackie Weaver. So now, section, section, one one section 113 is for us allowing our, or agreeing for our staff to be seconded to somebody else, not for somebody else to be seconded to us. Can I chat with the clerk on that, please, Ashley? No, this is a secondment of officers to the parish council. Thank you. I've got it here. It says, uh, blah, 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 um, apart from a section. A local authority may enter in an agree into an agreement with another local authority for the placing at the disposal of the latter, meaning the other local authority, 
for the purposes of their functions on such terms as may be provided, blah, 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 of the services of officers employed by the former, meaning us, but shall not enter into any such agreement with respect to any officer without consulting him, which presumably didn't happen either. Uh, so this is for us uh, seconding one of our staff to some other local authority. It's the only possible way of reading that. In any event, you know, you can't make something legal in retrospect. That's a nonsense. It's like if I go to Marks and Spencer and walk out without paying for a coat, I can't then go back and say, uh, I declare this to be a legal thing <laughs> in retrospect. It's bonkers. Can I have the clerk's advice on this, please? It kind of closes nicely the uh, legal, not legal argument, if you agree to it. Sorry, what does what? it do? Meetings, legal, not legal arguments would be closed by seconding officers. Can, can you explain that? Yeah. If you actually follow this and do it to the very letter, um, you'll be saying you seconded Jackie Weaver to the meetings on the 10th and the 21st, and also David Naylor to the meetings on the 25th and 27th of August. No, no Ashley, you can only read it in the sense that I've described, which is it would be us seconding one of our officers, you, to some other local authority. And it's local authorities. Jackie Weaver isn't a, a part of a local authority. Can I suggest then that we defer this and, and relook at the yeah. fine print? Yeah, defer and look at the fine print. Is that acceptable, Chair? Uh, yeah, yes, I think dropping it all together is probably more sensible, but if you want to do this. Yes, please. I would be very uh, happy to defer it. Can I propose that then, Chair? Sorry? Can I propose that that's deferred? I'll second. Okay. In favour, Councillor Sampson. In favour, Councillor Malt. And Smith. Okay. That's unanimous. Right, um, number seven to consider some minor revisions to the 21-22 budget. Who's speaking on that? Oh, um, Councillor Sampson. Okay. Um, we're now at 10 past nine. I don't propose to go through the budget line by line. What I would like to propose is that Ashley and I meet up, amend them and bring them to the next meeting. They've already been agreed. It's just a matter of moving some costs out of one cost centre into another cost centre and also getting some information especially uh, from yourself, Councillor Tolver, to do with the £10,000 uh, you pulled out of the air for your green handful. We're still waiting on a business plan from yourself that we asked for when you actually uh, got it voted through. Can I suggest that we do this budgeting through the Finance Committee? Well, we have another finance meeting. Well, but, is, but isn't that what our regulation financial regulations require well i would have thought so that's why we brought it to the full council because the finance chair hasn't called a finance meeting for over 12 months and he right. did and he didn't assist ashley with the preparation of the budget either well you can snipe as much as you like i'm not sniping i'm telling well, you the it fact did, sort of, did sound a little bit that, it's not that is fact ashley did have had no assistance. He, he asked people to give their comments and the only comments he got was from myself and Sue and John. What? Why you three didn't comment, I've no idea. What do you mean you three? Well, the th Councillor yeah, Burton, yeah. Burkill and yourself. I still think we should... Well, it depends how minor the changes are that you're 
contemplating, I guess, but uh, if it's of any significance, then it really ought to be done. That's so well, it has, to come to the, it has to come to the full council for ratification anyway. Can I, I just point out? from Councillor Burton to call a finance meeting, but I've heard nothing. I have had no emails from him. Why, no why, why don't you drop him? Why don't you drop him some proposals? No, we asked it's him not to call a meeting. Who's the finance chair? Well, how else do you think it's going to happen? Uh, under normal processes, the chairman of the committee calls the meeting, and we should have had a finance meeting. And you are well aware of that, Councillor Tolver. There's nothing to there's nothing to stop you making suggestions, is there? But we have. Um, well, what's the point of making suggestions when I don't get an answer to any emails? Yeah. <clears throat> that's what I think would be better to happen. But that's up to you. Up to you. Can we move on, please? What are we doing with this item? I'll meet with Ashley with the amendments. Hopefully they'll all be circulated to all councillors in the hope that uh, the chair of um, the finance committee will call a meeting to debate it. So we're deferring this item? Yes. Okay. I'm happy with that. Anybody else not happy with that idea? Nope. I'll concur. We'll call that. Can I, can I propose that deferment? I'll second. I, I, I just thought we were agreeing by default because we're all content with it. Well, it, it needs to be deferred. Okay, to be fair. Don't, we don't have to have a vote if we're all in accord. But if you want to, we can. Right. Yes, well, I'd like to suggest. I'd like to uh, defer this motion. Okay. Seconded. I'll second it, Councillor Moore. In favour. In favour. In favour. In favour. Right. Good. good, good. Next cool. item, Chair, is the buses. Um, Chair, can I make a proposal that we defer this item, please? Um, because it is a, a very important uh, motion, Absolutely. and I think all councillors although they have been given the opportunity to meet with Craig Brown, um, that hopefully he can meet with those that couldn't turn up to the meeting on the Saturday where we made ourselves available. Yeah, um, it's, that, I, yeah I, I understand that, Cynthia, but the, the problem is that the funding ends uh, very soon. Oh, um, I see, we, right. We, we, okay. we, we, need, we need to to move on where possible. Um, well, I'm in full support that um, the amount of money that we are going to commit to, um, I'm in full support of it because Hanforth needs a bus. And that's all I'm going to say. And I concur with you, uh, Councillor Samson, that we do need this bus. There are lots of residents who need to use this bus. Uh, the figures support it. It's a trial period, and I think it would be um, the correct thing for Hanforth Parish Council to support this for the pilot scheme of 12 months. We did actually discuss this last year, um, and it was brought, it didn't happen last year, it's happened this year. So I don't honestly think that there was <coughs> any councillor that was uh, had anything, uh, any objections to supporting this. But I may be incorrect in this assumption. Well, well, I certainly would in principle. I'm a bit concerned about the numbers because I didn't get the briefing. Uh, but uh, well, I can, I can, I could say that the. I, I, um, I, can, uh, I was a bit um, dubious in some respects. Let's put it like that, and I would like to be uh, assured about some of the numbers here because. It seems to me that in a sense we're paying for this three times over in that uh, the we, we pay rates as they used to be called, uh, what's it called, council tax, um, which includes an element of public transport subsidy, which 
totally disappears if we don't have the 130 bus. So where's that money gone? Uh, we're they did. Giving yeah, up, the old, we're, yeah, giving the, up, the we're giving up large amounts of land in the garden village, uh, which was supposed to be contributing substantially towards transport costs. So why isn't that being used for this? And also, because that won't be there for years. And also, of course, we uh, uh, lose business from the Hanford Town Centre if people are travelling down to Wilmslow and Alder the Edge. I'm not saying they shouldn't do that at all, of course, but uh, it does seem to me that we're, in a sense, paying three times over. Um, yeah. I, would, I would like to see how the figures have been arrived at to justify that. But Chair, if, if I can mention that, you're saying that people, we don't want people going to Wilmslow or Alder the Edge or whatever. They, if people need to go to a bank, they've got to go there. And yeah. a lot of people don't have uh, transport there of, of their own. They, yeah. they rely on the bus. Um, there are um, problems with saying that the garden village would pay for it. It may well do, but that's two, three, more, or possibly more years down the line. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight, and there is no guarantee that that bus will go where it's needed. Yeah. A lot of people in Hanforth need to get to hospital in Macclesfield. Exactly. They can't do that with a bus from the garden village unless something dramatic is done. The actual numbers, um, we're looking at being asked for a twelfth of the cost of the uh, cost of maintaining and service which is 120 grand. Yeah. Um, we're being asked for a 12th, which if that maintains the bus running for people in Hamforth, I think 10 grand, a 12th of the cost is uh, not bad value for money. We do have the funds in reserves, which could be used or could be uh, varied to, from other um, budget headings, but um, it's a it's a pilot. Uh, it's not something that we have to commit to long term, um, but there's sometimes occasions when we've just got to pay something. We're not actually getting a great deal of anything back from it. It's a service that the people of Hanforth need. Many of them need it. Um, the actual um, what do you call it? The terminal terminus of the uh, bus is Hanforth, um, to try and go to the airport would cost more money. Uh, there are possible other solutions for moving people during the day, so moving the bus, stretching its day, so that it's not purely used uh, all day, but there may be other options using such like as FlexiLink, which uh, is subsidised uh, by Cheshire East. We have an option here that by us going forward, and it's not been agreed by all of the councils yet, uh, but I think uh, at least 50%, 60% are agreed. Uh, the vast majority of the funding is coming from Cheshire East and Alderley Park, and uh, we're being asked for 10 grand, as I said, which is a 12th of the cost of subsidising the maintenance service at the current level, hopefully, within uh, for the next 12 months, 120 grand, thousand, which is again something that needs to be done urgently because the funding from central government will be disappearing in a matter of weeks we need to have something in place before then may i speak yeah. chairman please i mean I, th I, th I, th I think we're probably all in agreement but i would like to see the detailed proposal personally okay well i'm, I'm sure if you have a word with the uh Deputy Leader, I'll be happy to uh, to go through it with you. So if we could perhaps agree to go forward on this, subject to you getting the information, we want to move it forward. I'll see if I can make contact with him. In the and in principle vote then? And in principle vote, yes please. I'd like to propose that we go forward with uh, a commitment for £10,000 uh, for maintaining the service level of the 130 bus for, for the next year. 
What does a vote in principle mean? What, what, what does... So you get a chance to have a scrutinise, but Cheshire's get the reassurance that we are happy enough. But you'll get to see the thing and perhaps bring it back to the March meeting, but at least Cheshire East know that we're saying yes in principle. I don't know if I'd be content with that if I was Cheshire East, but uh, there we mm. go. Um, it, it sounds like we're saying kindly get on with it, and, but we're not sure if we're going to pay for it yet. Well, no, the principle is that we will pay for it unless there's something dramatically uh, awry with uh, the information that you get from uh, the deputy leader, which the three councillors, three of us councillors, had a very long, over an hour meeting where we were discussing this, and we came out at the other end believing that Hanforth needs the 130, and we have a responsibility no, to make sure anyone. that that we get it. Anybody would disagree with that. It's a question of how much we pay. Well, it's a twelfth of the cost. It's a twelfth of the cost. It's ten thousand. We have those funds available. My concern, um, Councillor Talbot, would be if we do not support this motion or we ask to uh, put in a lower amount that actually Hanforth would not be served as well as it should be done uh, if we put in this amount of money. Because it's a, a number of councils together, we can obviously influence where this bus actually goes. If well, I was we, just going to ask that, if you don't mind, well, what, what is the route within Hanforth being proposed? Sorry, say that again. Within the Hanforth bit of this bus service, what, what is the route proposed? Well, um, currently, currently it will be the same route, won't it, as existing? Well, uh, that's my question, is it? Yes. Yes, we will have input on the route where it affects Hanforth. However, if we don't contribute, the concern is, we, or we contribute less, we will have less influence. And I suspect that looking at the numbers of people on the buses, that there are quite a, a large number of people in Hanforth um, who need to pick up this bus. And if we don't support it, it we will have no transport in, apart from trains in Hanforth. Yeah, I totally understand it's that. worrying, <laughs> to say the least. Well, okay, I'm personally prepared to go along with the idea of a yes in principle. Um, yeah. And no. Uh, but, but I would like to see the details before we get totally committed. Well, it's, it's one of those, Chair, that we have to be committed. Um, well, then I would have to back off in that case until I've seen the numbers. Well, the numbers are 12,000, which is a 12th of the total cost. Uh, Sorry, 10,000, which is a 12th of the total cost. Very good. I think it's Hanforth Parish Council's duty to support this bus. I agree. I agree. Uh, we could use the Greener Hanforth budget, of course, which is totally untouched. Chair? Well, I'm just thinking, does that make any sense? Do you does use what the Greener make any Hanforth sense? budget? I mean, okay, we haven't used it for the last year because of COVID. No, we're not used it for 22 months, Chair. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's true. Um, luckily, the uh, the volunteer organisations have taken on the brunt of doing that, haven't they? But we do have the funds available. So it doesn't if, mean... If, that if, 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 we're, if we were to go to the residents of Hanford and say, look, we decided we weren't really sure about this, so we decided to let the bus disappear they would be rightfully up in arms. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility, even, even if it's only for one year, we can make our mind up in more detail without losing the, without waiting until we've lost the current funding. Mm. Okay, yep, I agree. Oh, 
I, be, I believe that uh, all we need now is a proposal. Yes? Yeah. I can second. Sorry, who proposed? Yeah, I, th I thought Cynthia proposed or soon. Yeah. I propose that. Sorry, Sid, I didn't hear yeah, you. Sorry, I I propose that we commit ten thousand pound to support the bus uh, for one year under a, um, and hopefully that uh, Councillor Tolva can get in touch with um, right. Craig Brown, the deputy, and hopefully he can give him the information that he gave us because I, I it was a very I, very good meeting that we had with him. Yeah, can I just point out? I think I think that uh, it it was probably in the email pack from Craig that uh, that I certainly received, and I know Cynthia and Sue did. Uh, it'll, Chair, it will be in your email pack that you will have received from him. So uh, perhaps look at that, or ask him to send it you again. But uh, can we get on with the uh, the vote, Chair? Yeah. In favour. In favour, Councillor Moore. In favour, yeah. Smith. All in favour are unanimous. Thank you very much. I think we better record that, don't you? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yep. 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 Okay. I'm exhausted. What have we got? Shall I read it, Chair? Hmm? Would you like me to read it? Oh, 15 minute discussion forum for items not pertaining to the agenda. Yeah, so I think, that, isn't this for Councillor Moore? It is. I did propose this, but given the length of time that this meeting has taken, um, I, I would still like to um, listen to members of the public. Um, it's rather an unfortunate situation that has brought the parish council to the fore. However, it, there's always a, a silver lining to everything. And that is that the parish council has been brought to the attention of a lot of residents who have misconceptions about what the parish council is. And now we have the opportunity with lots of people here, um, we can't necessarily answer questions directly. We may not know the answers. But I do think it's important that the residents here have some input and that cur currently that does not happen. And I would like to see this motion of a discussion on every agenda, just as the uh, open forum is at the beginning. But the suggestion is that it is at the end of the meeting so that we can uh, regulate uh, the time a bit more effectively. Chair, there's a hand up, Alan Murdoch. Clark, could you unmute? Uh, yeah, yeah I, think, I think I'm unmuted. Right, I've got, got two, two questions. I was going to have questions for councillors uh, <laughs> Burkhill and Burton, but unfortunately they're not here. Um, <laughs> so we'll have to leave those for another day. Um, but um, there is a provision for an annual parish meeting, uh, which can be held, I think, in either April or May. And I'd like to suggest, if I may, that uh, councillors consider making this be held in April um, before the May election, whilst the present councillors and officers are still in place and uh, can um, contribute to the debate. And secondly, um, in all the government meet governance meetings that I attend, uh, there's always a report by the chief executive officer, the secretary or the treasurer on what's happened in the, if you like, the organisation during the month um, since the previous meeting. Um, obviously, in this case, that officer would be the clerk. Um, I don't know how councillors or the public really know what's been going on behind the scenes in the absence of a report by the clerk. So I wonder whether the councillors would like to consider having an agenda, standard agenda item for a report by the clerk of anything which he considers relevant to be brought before the meeting. Uh, can I answer that, please, Chair? We, yes. you, we always used to have um, 
a report from the clerk and unfortunately um it somehow got lost in the momentum and i'd i'd welcome it to come back because the more we can get out to the community exactly what's happening on the parish council the better it is for handful parish council in a similar vein alan i would like to see a report from ward councillors but if you do remember, um, I put that to a meeting some time ago and um, it was voted down. And so we didn't get reports from ward councillors. And that I think was a great shame because uh, we don't know what's going on at Cheshire East unless um, ward councillors inform us. And again, it's, it's about keeping in touch with the residents. Let's face it, this parish council is for the residents. It's not for anything else. Okay, and as for the annual annual parish meeting, would you agree that that would be before the election? I'm in favour of that. Well, Am I, th I? I thought it had to be in May. Am I wrong? You ask the clerk. Any time between April and June, you have three month period to hold it. Okay. This, this, that's the parish meeting rather than the annual parish council meeting. Yes, that's right, Brian. The annual council meeting has to be held in May, 100%. Okay. I'm going to point out, Chair, that Roger had a hand up. Um, um, sorry, are we going to take that forward? Roger. Sorry, I've had a number of um, questions filed with me um, from, like, the... Uh, TV stations and the like. Um, I don't know how much energy people have got, but uh, it would probably be, I don't know if they're still here with us, but uh, probably be courteous if we went through some of those. Chair, um, can I just, can I, can I mention that um, we're here to really, for the Parish Council residents, uh, um, and if, if yeah, there's residents who have I, questions. I understand that, but if a TV station is interested in something, it's probably also of interest to the residents, wouldn't you think? Well, perhaps after the residents have had their questions, well, we can we can look at those who come from outside the village. We can we can interleave them. Uh, have I got? Um, let's see who who we've got. Have we got Georgina Hill? Is Georgina Hill one of our guests? Hmm. No. Okay. Sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. I'm I'm I'm, I'm having a look now. <laughs> oh, you silenced the ball. Paul has his hand up. I I can't spot her in here though. So, can we ask Roger what his question is? Okay. Sure. If I may uh, briefly return to the question of local transport, uh, I think the parish council ought to have a look at the uh, Greater Manchester. Uh, local transport plan. There are bus routes marked in there, uh, notably uh, express bus services. The bus service uh, from Stockport via uh, Woodford via the Garden Village to the airport is shown on the map, as is uh, an express bus service from the airport and running through the centre of Hanforth, i.e. to the west of the A34. So I think uh, those bus services uh, ought to be taken into consideration. And I think a colleague of mine on the um, uh, Friends of Handful station would like to make a comment about rail services, if Ian Ball is still present. Uh, can, I just, can, I, can I answer that, please, Chair? Sorry, what? Can I answer that point of Rogers? Yeah, sure. Uh, the... I presume by saying Roger by saying through the middle of Hanforth, do you mean the A555? Uh, I, I think it's going to come straight through the centre of the village. It's shown well, to the west of the bypass. Right, mm. because any buses that go in towards the airport into Greater Manchester, um, they, are, they are subject to penalties if they've not got the green buses, which the 130 doesn't have any green buses. Uh, it's something that could be looked at in the future, getting electric buses because then there would be the benefit of not having the extra penalty uh, of um, polluting buses, uh, which would enable uh, a better route into Man into the airport terminus and uh, further on further on from that. 
uh, it's something that was looked at. Yeah, I think the parish council ought to have a look at that map and, and see what's uh, proposed. Uh, but, uh, again, I'd like to uh, ask Ian Ball if he's still around to say something about train services. Ian, are you there? Needs unmuting, Ashley. Oh, another one needs unmuting. Ian, where are you? Top row. Oh, there he is. The boat with his hand up. Yeah, got him. Yeah, good. Thank you. There you are. <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, I'll make this very brief. Um, I have a concern. Um, I, the um, document that was issued by the Manchester uh, Recovery Task Force of uh, uh, the rail industry um, is um, proposing three options. Uh, the three options are fairly major changes to the South Manchester network in order to try and put paper over the cracks, the rather major cracks that are, are uh, represented by that bottleneck, severe bottleneck on the service, the lines between Manchester Piccadilly Platform 13 and Salford Crescent. Um, which uh, is also used by umpteen freight trains as well as umpteen passenger trains and uh, totally impossible to get it, those trains through. So three options have been proposed um, by this uh, recovery group and it's out for public consultation at the moment and I would dearly like Hanforth Parish Council, if it's not already done so, to formulate a uh, response that reflects the views of Hanforth. Um, basically, um, we currently have, when I say currently, pre-COVID, uh, we currently have half hourly services into Manchester Piccadilly, we have half hourly services to Crewe, we have uh, a, a direct service to Southport and stations on the Southport line. Um, so Hanforth is currently directly connected both north and south. Um, however, because of that severe infrastructure bottleneck north of Platform 13 and Manchester Piccadilly, we have severe delays on some of those trains, as we all know. The three options that are proposed. Option A uh, is uh, going to retain the half hourly service to Manchester Piccadilly. It's going to uh, retain um, a, an hourly service to crew direct, but there will be no service direct north of Manchester Piccadilly. And that will, trains will not go to platform 13, they'll go to the main concourse. And if you want to make a connection northwards from Manchester Piccadilly, you'll have to make that uh, rather long traits from the concourse right up up and along to platform 13, which um, when we take into account the uh, uh, context of, of what's happening in Hanforth um, is, is rather unfortunate for the people who we intend to benefit from the, uh, the new step-free access, the access for all that is currently uh, beginning to happen for Handforth Station. So those people, the disabled people, the people with uh, push chairs, the people with heavy luggage, uh, the infirm, will all have to uh, uh, traipse across from the main concourse to platform 13. It gets worse. Uh, option B, we have uh, no direct trains to crew anymore with option B. They all stop at Alderley Edge. So if we're not concerned about that, well, um, I, I think there's something a little odd about that. Um, we would, however, um, have uh, through, tra through trains once an hour up uh, to, not to Southport this time, but to Blackpool. So we would have a, a situation not too bad at platform 13, but we'd have no connection to crew. Option C is the option which our beloved uh, MP for Tatton has been lobbying for in the local press, uh, means that 
when we join a train at Hanforth, we have a magnificent total of seven stations to choose from to go to, and no more than that. Uh, those stations are the stations between here and Manchester Piccadilly, and here and Alderley Edge, and that's it. We are essentially no longer a main uh, rail uh, service. We, we are a little um, branch line. Um, so I, I think option C in my mind is totally absurd and, and totally unacceptable. When we think about the garden village coming up uh, shortly, um, for these people to only have seven stations to choose from uh, without changing um, at uh, Piccadilly or Winslow is, is absurd. So um, I would just implore the, uh, the council to think about these things and maybe formulate a plan to put forward during the consultation before it, before it ends fairly early in March um, to, um, to see what we can do to retain something of the services that we've had before. Thank you. Um, Ian, may I ask you how long this consultation period is for? Well, I believe it's going to be around about the 10th of March or so that, that it oh, really, as soon as that? Yeah, it's, okay. it's fairly short fuse. Does it, does it require the council to have come together to make a decision or can individual councillors make their comments? Yeah. I think that would be uh, an equally good idea. P perhaps the more the merrier um, in terms of uh, submitting uh, views to the consultation. Okay, because really it's going to come down to a handful of councillors agreeing a position and that's not really more significant those, than those individual councillors making their opinions, is it? Right, yes. And I think also whatever we say, which of those options that are on offer, we say is our least bad option, we ought to continue to lobby for the uh, some, some significant improvement to that infrastructure north of Platform 13 at Manchester Piccadilly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My concern on that one is that um, we ha have... Um, outline planning permission for the car park is that under threat because of this if we've if we're in, in essence a, a branch line and not a main line anymore and people actually can't go anywhere what's the point in the coming to handful i think that question is exactly a question that will be asked if we allow option c to win yes yeah mm. So I think as a parish council we should respond on uh, you know as the parish council Okay. Any did uh, Ashley? Did you find Ms. Hill? Alan has his hand up. Uh, Alan, uh, Alan? I, th I think this, I think this is something of the interest to the Garden Village uh, developers as well, because a large part of their um, argument in favour of the Garden Village is that it's going to have rail access from Hanforth to various places. So if that rail access is going to be truncated then th that rather takes away a bit of their attraction um ian if you could circulate the details of the consultation we can certainly send it out to various people that we think might have um an interest in responding okay anybody else on the rail service was that the end of your stuff, Alan? Uh, yes, for now, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Did you find Georgina Hill? Uh, no, I've not found a Georgina Hill. Okay. No, sorry. Right. Uh, who was the next one? Uh, we had... Um, a, oh, wait a minute. A very Here much... Go. Here we go. She should have entered the meeting now. Hmm? She should be in now, yeah. She should be. She's somewhere. 
Yeah. I'll unmute her. There we go. Yeah. Hello. Um, do you have the authority? Ah, great. Bye <laughs> <laughs> bye. Can I? Have you have you got rid of that one, Nash? Yeah. I was going to say I saw a message come up then from a Kathleen Keane, who is a resident. Uh, don't know the name, but she was asking if she could ask a question. Kathleen Keane. KK. Mm -hmm. I have seen her knocking about. We've got Dawn. Dawn, I doubt if she's here anymore, but maybe uh, Dawn. Yeah. There we are. Good morning, Britain. <coughs> this is Kathleen Key. Roy North. So Roy, Roy Hunt, I beg your pardon. Dawn Adams. Paul Long. Dale Hall. Yeah, we do have a number of residents who are actually on with their hands up. I don't know if you can uh, see them or perhaps Ashley can. Well, the, I can only see what you can see. The, the, the people who've submitted them in writing were, uh, I'm, not, I'm not arguing against that, I'm just saying that people who submitted them in okay. writing Fine. did get into the queue first. And I, I wasn't it. sure whether you'd seen it. No, I, I, I can't see these things. <clears throat> Unless we find people soon, Chair, we're just going to sit here looking at people's pictures. There's this chap. Alan's waving his hand. Yeah, Alan's back again. So you really, am I, am I on mood? It's just a comment, really, that uh, I'm sure a lot of the people of Handfuls will be very disappointed that in, in this meeting, uh, firstly, that uh, Councillor Burkhill hasn't turned up with what appears to be a, a rather lame excuse. No sign of Councillor Burton at all, with or without his father. Um, so I had questions for both of them that I've not been able to put to them. Um, the bus um, question has been on the agenda for a good couple of weeks. And unfortunately, um, the chair has not been briefed or not briefed himself on that in such a way that we could make a decision on what might be a very important part of the uh, of the, count, the, the council's offering or the parish offering. And, um, and you know, the, the budget was a fair shambles as well, but we're not able to approve that with a unanimous um, decision or even uh, or, or, or with sensible questions as to why not. I'm sure to anybody outside looking at the meeting, ignoring the... Um, the disruptions and so on. I think the actual business of the council has been very, very poor. I'd just like to mention there, Chair, that the uh, budget <laughs> are purely for um, heading ratification, heading rationalisation, if you like, just taking some of the uh, uh, budget lines and incorporating them with another one that's similar so that we've not got uh, lots of different budget lines. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice of a proposal to deal with at the time. It's, it's not the actual numbers, but that's what I'm saying. And Alan, can I just say the budget has been approved. It's just, we're just going to move some cost centres round. And, okay. uh, you know, we haven't had a finance meeting for well over 12 months. Yeah. But I will be asking the clerk to contact the chair of finance 
which is Councillor Brewerton, to call a finance meeting. Okay, it also seems strange that we can't get unanimity on the on the payment of accounts, which seems to be a should be a relatively straightforward affair. Anyway, I, sorry, that's just my general view on the way people in the parish will see this meeting having been conducted, not just the disruption, but the actual business, the attention some of the councillors have paid or not paid to turning up or briefing themselves. Well, can I just say that the payments um, have been approved. It was only Councillor Tolver who decided to abstain and not give a reason. So, Precisely. you know, we've, yeah, but we can't be responsible for councillor tolver's opinion we're no, trying to we're trying to do housekeeping and keep handforth parish council not, not criticizing um, you I'm not, I'm not criticizing you i'm not i'm saying i'm not criticizing you for councillors burkill and brewerton not turning up i'm saying i think okay. people will draw their own conclusions as the seriousness of which people treat these meetings as turning up or briefing themselves brought beforehand okay thank you chairman okay. I think we've had more than our 15 minutes on this. Can we close this and move on? Yeah. Just just, just make a little comment to uh, um, about Councillor Burkhill. These meetings at Cheshire East do take all day. Now, after two and a half hours of this meeting, I'm exhausted. So if I was, if I was Councillor Burkhill, I would be... Uh, pretty pretty knackered, I think, after a, a full day meeting. So uh, I think we ought to take a bit more trouble to avoid clashing with Cheshire East meetings, whether that be of the uh, full council or of the Northern Planning Committee, because they do run for an awful long time. Yeah, Chair, I, I would point and out and that... On, and also the Strategic Planning Board, of course. I would point out, Chair, that uh, while Councillor Smith has also been at that meeting all day, but has been here following the events of this evening's meeting. Well, that's that's great, but uh, we're not all as young as Councillor Smith. Well, if that's the case, maybe we should be looking at getting some younger members. <laughs> well, it's, very, it's very difficult to find anybody who will stand. I mean, we, we only, out of a population of 6,500, well, the good thing is there is a vacancy we're, we're, in the we're West lucky, Ward. We're lucky if it there, is, there is a vacancy in the West Ward, so let's see who comes forward. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, I find it to be almost a full-time job. It's very difficult to expect anybody of working age to be able to give up as much time as is, uh, uh, as is necessary. Well, I think if any other councillors want to resign and and we'll see where we go on in May, I'd be very pleased to see that put to the test. I, I, have, I have a full-time job, Chair. Uh, councillor, well, Councillor Smith has a full-time job. Um, and I have a full-time job. Councillor Moore does. And uh, I have a full-time job looking after the house on my <laughs> own. Yeah. yeah. Quite right. Uh, Ashley, I'd point out, that, is that Kathleen Keane on the top line there? Uh, was there a second ago? Right, sorry, it just keeps flipping around, doesn't it? I did ask to unmute. Okay. Like, uh, All right, shall we set a date for the next meeting then? Yeah. Shall we revert to the Tuesdays? Yes, I'd agree. Second Tuesday of the month. Can we go for a little later in the month, Brian? Only yeah. because it's the first, if you see what I mean. It, it, it's yeah. a very short month. Yeah, yeah. fine. Is can, that okay? Can, if we go for the 16th. Can, 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 can you check yeah. to see that that doesn't clash with any Cheshire East stuff? I think it does, but we'll check. But yeah, yeah, that's done. We're on a Wednesday, isn't it? No, yeah. Well, yeah. sorry, what? Yeah, they're on a Wednesday, aren't they? Cheshire East. Yeah. Our meetings have historically been Tuesdays. Mm. Yeah, so Tuesday the 16th. You can look them up on the website anyway. Mm. So if we say on or about the whatever that was, 16th. 16th. We'll yeah. check with Cheshire East. 
So you need to avoid the full council. Well, there won't be a full Cheshire East meeting, but uh, the uh, Strategic Planning Board and the Northern Planning Committee. But they're, they're during the day chair, aren't they? Yeah. So it. But they can go on all day. Yeah, they do. But we we start at seven o'clock or seven thirty. Well, I'm just saying, if you want your councillors to turn up, having spent all day at meetings like this, and then do another meeting like this, you know. Be, Are we having? Well, a... well if, if 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 you don't want to do two meetings, don't well, go on more than one council. Yeah. Is what I say. <laughs> Are we having a planning meeting and then a full council meeting? Well, actually. Oh. Don't, don't, don't we have to have an extraordinary planning meeting to deal with the the, the one that we, we couldn't deal with today? It, yes, yes, we can do. We'll uh, we'll say, I'll send out an email, and we'll organise that. What what is the nature of that planning application? I mean, is it one that we're likely to actually no be concerned about? No, no. Do we no. actually need to do one at all then? No. Right. Can we agree not to bother? Mm -hmm. Anybody bothered about bothering? I don't, I don't know what I'm being asked to bother about. <laughs> Whether we have an extraordinary meeting for the P&E. As long as it, uh, that, that we do have or don't. Don't have one. As long as it doesn't impact on people's planning, uh, getting into the right timing. Well, that's what I wanted to discuss and it was Councillor Tolbert said we couldn't discuss it so that's why we're now, having another I think meeting he's now saying you approve it yes <laughs> you approve it yeah well i'd 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 i'd, I'd, hold, that's, I'd, that's, I'd have reservations about that need to even bother about it <laughs> i'm not going to worry about a pork no i'll tell you what let's leave it like this that ashley will circulate an email saying which planning application, get, get the number right, circulate an email saying which planning application we need to think about and we'll come oh. back to him and say whether we have... Well, he, he gave us that in an email. He gave it to us before the meeting. Send it again. Yeah. Didn't you hear, Ash? Yeah. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Look, can you just have another look? Yeah. I just feel as though we're going over stuff and we're looking quite inept. Getting good at that. Well, I'm sorry. I want us to look professional. I, I did agree. try and debate. I did give the new, the, the new planning applications and it was only because the chair said that we couldn't do that because it hadn't been proper, properly uh, advertised. And now he wants to say, shall we leave it? Well, we're going to have to leave it now, councillors, because it's it's gone 10 o'clock. I know. And um, I, I, I'd just like to though, thank those members, members of the public who've taken the time and sat there as long as we have all evening. Uh, without a great deal of input. Um, hopefully next time we'll be a bit more slick about it and the events of the last couple of weeks will have been faded into the distance so only those who are really interested in the Parish Council may be here rather than those who just want to act the fool. Okay, yeah, I agree. But uh, thanks to those who have uh, not managed to get the question in that they wanted. Um, however, next time. however, if they do still have a question if they put it to the parish clerk maybe we can uh, yeah answer it i'd go along with that if you want to put the name of who yeah, they'd like absolutely. to answer it yeah quite happy to do that okay or they can put it to me as they've already been doing in droves well we haven't seen those if we if well, you just exactly. circulate <laughs> yeah but if you just circulated maybe them, Brian, maybe, maybe could have had a on it. the system because there won't be quite so many people attending perhaps yeah that's what i just said yeah. is that the close of the meeting anybody else got anything they want to mention no well we've, we've already closed it chair haven't we we've set the date uh, i've set the date but i haven't closed it yeah 
Well, good night. So I shall now do that. I shall close the meeting now. <laughs>